Hello and welcome to another episode of Chewing the Brew. Today we'll be talking about, or I'll be enjoying, a Dormancy, the breakfast stout by Bale Breaker Brewing. Dormancy. This is a breakfast stout, um, and breakfast stouts are typically stouts, oatmeal stouts. Um, so that means they have a significant amount of oats in their grain bill, in their mash, um, and uh, coffee added. So that's a oatmeal coffee stout. Sometimes there's chocolate involved as well, uh, but the standard components are it's a stout, it's an oatmeal stout with coffee and possibly chocolate. Um, I actually have, uh, Bale Breaker has been doing some wine bottle releases and I have the the wine bottle or the whiskey barrel or whatever. It's a, it's a bottle age release. So I have this in that version as well. And I plan on doing a head to head between this and that at some point, but that's a lot of beer to drink. And <laughs> yeah, I want to find the right people to do that with. Let's put it that way for my own safety. <laughs> Anyways, so <clears throat> a stout is a, a stronger version of a porter. A porter is a dark ale, a dark, strong ale uh, that originated in England, uh, theoretically to feed the porters, the people who carried um, uh, luggage, cargo, stuff around the city and in uh, London, in England. Uh, porters, and so it was a strong, dark beer to keep them fed, and then there was a stout porter. That is a uh, more. Um, it's not an imperial. They didn't increase the um, the the alcohol content necessarily, though that that can be a characteristic. And in general, porter and stout are elastic categories. Um, the only real rules are that they're typically ales, but even that's open to interpretation. Um, there's any sort of beer category is is an elastic category. Uh, so let's see how this works. They describe it as a lo conditioned on locally roasted coffee beans. Uh, Bale Breaker apparently one of their big things is they grow all their own hops, and so they're they're. Um, that's kind of one of their, their, their big things. And so they, uh, it makes sense that they're also uh, partnering with local providers of coffee beans. Obviously, coming from the Pacific Northwest, they're not growing their own coffee beans there. Um, that just doesn't work. <laughs> but hashtag science. Uh, let's see how this tastes. Uh. Nice satisfying clip. Hmm, really dry. Oatmeal stouts typically have a sweeter note to them. Um, but this, I'm getting like a, like a real dry cereal rather than a, a sweet. Um, it's quite a nice head. It's sticking around. What, probably about an inch maybe? Yeah. Bubbles look pretty good in there. Mm. Okay, so a lot of times, um, think uh, dragon's milk or something like that, a, a milk stout, uh, which is even higher sugar content. Um, you're with, with a coffee stout, in my experience, a lot of them, it's, it's more like a cafe latte. It's, it's sugar and milk and, and coffee. This is coffee just coffee. Maybe a coffee that's been left open for a day or two, like coffee grounds. It's not like the really fresh oily uh, coffee flavor that you'll get when you freshly ground something. But it's not bad. It's the, the fact that it's a dried just coffee. I like that. That that speaks towards something I'd probably enjoy. And as you can tell, the head's still hanging around. It's 
it's far from gone. Coffee, grains, um, maybe a, a hint of soap of smoke. Um, if there is dark chocolate, it's a really, it's like a, um, like a, the chocolate, like the cocoa powder for baking, the unsweetened cocoa powder. I was told to try um, uh, breathing through different nostrils and seeing how the smell changes. The problem is, is right now it's spring and there are all sorts of things coming to life outside. And so allergies, and I've had allergies for a long time. Um, allergies pretty much plug my nose for a lot of this time of year. <laughs> so it's only the really strong <laughs> Only the really strong scents that make it through. <laughs> Maybe a bit of uh, dark cherry. There's some, there's some sweetness, but it's a really, really subtle, just barely there. Hmm. Maybe even some raspberry. Stouts usually benefit for being a little bit warmer when they're served. Um, some of those flavors, because they're not strongly hopped in particular, um, some of those flavors really benefit from the, the development, the opening up they'll get as they warm. Um, I took this can out of the fridge maybe 15, 20 minutes ago. So it's, it's still pretty cool. I guess it's mid to upper 40s. Oh, okay, so now the, the chocolate is, is building. Um, it could almost be uh, like a, a dark chocolate bar, like a 60 or 70%, not an 80 or 90. Um, we're getting into the, you can actually taste the sugar now, um, which would make sense with an oatmeal stout. <clears throat> oatmeal stouts tend to have um, a decent, uh, a slightly higher volume of sugar. Um, I don't know all the characteristics of an oatmeal stout, but I'd also expect a a really smooth mouthfeel, like a, a really, uh, like a thick lusciousness to the mouthfeel is another general characteristic of an oatmeal stout. And like I said, breakfast stouts are oatmeal stouts with coffee. I keep getting a, a hint of something almost, I want to say asparagus, but it's not asparagus, something green, um, which I suppose would be the hops. It does have hops in it. Um, generally hops play a distant second fiddle. Um, in, in a, you know, a real, uh, a, a drink like this, uh, they're not going to be a, a dominant or a primary flavor characteristic. Um, but let's see. Okay. Yeah. Now this is smelling like a really nice, tasty, dark chocolate bar. That's not you know, 50% paraffin. That's, it's a, it's a good dark chocolate bar. When you, you'd want to snap little pieces off of and, you know, savor. Let's see how it drinks. Hmm. Actually just here, you get the berries. That's really nice. There's a lot, there's a lot, a lot of layers to this. I like that. Now that's just in the nose. Hmm. Okay, okay. Dark chocolate, cherries, um, a really nice espresso, like a, a dark roast, like a, a French roast or an Italian roast. Um, uh, a little bit of green fields. Not sure where that's come from, um, but the, the the cherry is a slightly complicated cherry. Um, th there's a fruitiness, so there, there's a brightness to it, almost raspberry, uh, but there's also like a real nice, just straight down the middle of the road, delicious cherry. Uh, and it's almost maybe getting into cherry cordial, 
you know, you got the, the dark chocolate with the, the, the dark chocolate uh, bonbon with the, the cherry and the cream inside, that kind of thing. But it's like a really good cherry in there. Uh, so there is that sweetness, definitely. Um, what else I'm noticing here? Uh, the bubbles don't just disappear. They hang out um, and take their time coming down. Uh, so that's good. And that, that will, that's good. Sorry, I was distracted. Um, that's, that's speaking to the thickness, which you would also expect to accompany the oatmeal stout. Um, yeah, so we got the bit of legs to the head. That's nice. Um, so that speaks to the, the thickness that an oatmeal stout's going to bring. Uh, that's, that's nice. And yeah, the, the, the mouth feels that kind of thickness that you'd expect from an oatmeal stout. There's almost a, a divergence. There's like, there's two, two trains on different tracks and the tracks aren't right next to each other. They're a hundred yards apart, maybe. Not miles apart, just a hundred yards apart. They're going in the same direction. Uh, but we have kind of the, the fruit, cherry sweetness uh maybe almost you know mild dark chocolate approaching milk chocolate and then you have this kind of coffee and and stout dark grain maltiness uh and they work together they're not in conflict um but they are two very distinct flavors that are going on and you can i i you i can easily pick them up in this beer and that's that's really quite nice i like that Yeah, that's good stuff. Uh, so this is definitely a, um, probably a cooler weather beer. So I want to drink this before it warms up too much. I got a couple more months. Um, so cool weather beer. You know, it's not particularly st stiff. It's not even quite 7%. It's a 6.8% ABV. So, well, it's not, it, it's kind of at the high end of sessionable. It's not going to kick you on your pants. Um, so that's nice. It's it's accessible. It, it you can have it if you're having a uh, you know around a campfire. It would probably work really nicely around a campfire on a cool evening, and you could probably have two of them. Um, or you know next year with with a good book. Um, food wise, because of the sweetness in this beer, I'm not sure I would pair it with something sweet, though. I think this would work really, really well with a rich vanilla ice cream. I know, right? Hold the presses, uh, beer floats. <laughs> I have long wanted to explore this topic. It's very interesting to me. Uh, I first heard of the idea, what, seven, eight, eight, maybe nine years ago now, and I tried a Guinness and vanilla ice cream float and don't knock it till you've tried it is all i can say because it really is something else but let's say your margin of error is pretty narrow uh beer's a very powerful flavor and mixing it with ice cream which is another very powerful flavor there's just a lot of room to go crazy so you can't just scoop any ice cream into any beer like you would with any soda um but starting with you know the the foundation the, the guinness and vanilla i think that the the cherry and the chocolate notes in dormancy by bell breaker would work particularly well with a very nice vanilla ice cream and would taste really something special. So this has been Dormancy by Dale Breaker. It's a very tasty breakfast stout. If stouts are your thing, if breakfast is your thing, eh, give it a try. <laughs>